So yeah, we will start talking about multi-tenancy. So on the login page, uh, apart from username and password, and of course language, so you can you can localize the software. It's quite easy to do. It's already localized with uh, some language, but if you want to change some translations of the labels, you you can do that by just simply editing with JavaScript JS files on the server. So it's possible to change it. So all the translations can be made by you. Uh, and on the login screen, we have this field here, uh, which is tenant. Yeah, so username and password are quite straightforward, but actually what this tenant is. Let me start from the beginning. Uh, so I will draw some diagram for you to understand what's the tenant. So let's say that this is uh, the whole system. This is our application. Yeah. The system is split into tenants. So we have one of the tenants is called landlord and this is tenant created out of box this landlord tenant is used for tenant management and that includes operations like creating a yeah, creation of the new tenants reading yeah so showing information about current tenants updating existing tenants and if necessary deleting them as well. So this is basically this landlord tenant is used for tenant management. Uh, so we can create a new tenant with that. And now also one of the tenants created by default uh, with the fresh installation is simply a default tenant. Uh, and of course you can create your own tenants, maybe you are, but uh, basically what's the tenant and why the system is split? Uh, into those uh, categories called tenants. So you can think about tenant as simply a customer. Yeah. So uh, let's say uh, you host your dialer. Yeah. On the server, you have one software, one installation of the software, one instance of the software. Uh, but your operations are to host the dialer for uh, other customers. Yeah, you have multiple customers, uh, and you want to run their operations. They pay you for doing that, but you don't want those customers to see each other's data. So you will use tenant to separate that data. Yeah, to to hide that data of a campaign manager so you don't want different customers to see each other's lists. It, it also relates to scripter, so you don't want one customer to see and use the scripts of the other customer. And also the same with reporting, yeah? So you don't want them to see each other's reports. So basically tenant is a container for other operations, yeah, for your customer's operations, and you will use separate tenants to cover operations of separate customers. This division will be made where they can't see each other's data. So let's take a look now, what's the structure of the tenant and, and why do we have tenant in the first place? Uh, so within a tenant, tenant is used as a container for campaigns. So there will be multiple campaigns on the tenant and so on. There is no really uh, a limit of the number of campaign you can have. The same with number of tenants, but uh, it just needs to be uh, reasonable. So within tenant, we have campaigns. You can think about campaigns as containers. So within inbound campaign, we have multiple queues. Or if we are talking about uh, outbound campaign, agent objects. So agents are logging into campaigns if it comes to outbound or queues uh, when it comes to inbound. So we have landlord tenant and now we will be logging into this uh, this landlord tenant yeah, firstly in the application. So you will see those options of tenant management. Yeah, so we will be able to create, read, update and delete. So I'm just summarizing. We will be talking now after I wipe out this diagram. I will log into this landlord console, this administration console. Uh, 
Uh, and yeah, we have login screen and, and we need to specify this tenant. So let me start with this landlord console. So specifically, I say I want to log into the landlord console. And during installation, you were prompted to create an administrator account for this landlord console. So I'm logging into this landlord console uh, and I have two applications now. One of which is soft dialer repository, the other is tenant manager. So uh, this soft dialer repository is uh, the dialer's database. Yeah? So the dialer's configuration. Uh, this uh, tenant manager is uh, the thing we were talking about, create, read, update, delete, manage tenants in general. So let's start with this uh, tenant manager, so management console. What we have in here, firstly, we have a panel with our tenants. So this is list of the tenants currently created, provisioned on the system, on this installation of the dialer. From this panel, we can control the tenants, so we can manage those tenants in a way we can create, edit, or delete the tenant. Uh, once one of the tenants is uh, selected, then in this panel here on the right-hand side, we can control uh, separate individual services related to that tenant. So, uh, as I mentioned, multi-tenancy and multiple tenants are mainly used to uh, split, to hide the data between, between your customers. So I mentioned that you don't want them to see each other's campaign data or reporting data, so those services in here, or scripting data. And also there are some schedules, schedule configuration. Also, you don't want them to see each other's data in here because it, it relates to the agents they have and uh, the queues and campaigns. So this is scheduler to automatically log in queues and, uh, and agents. Basically from this panel here, you can control the services you can manage them the same way. So you can create new services. Actually, this is the full list of the services. There aren't any, any other services. So everything at the moment is included in this list. Uh, but you can delete some of them because, for example, you don't want to use reporting because one of the customers will not be using it, but it, it, it's taking up some resources on the server while it's running because it will still be collecting the data and storing the data. So if you are not using reporter for one of the customers, you simply delete these three services in here and that's it. Yeah, they are not consuming unnecessary resources from your server. And there is also notifications panel. You don't really have to worry too much about it. There will be some alert monitor notifications appearing in here on harmful warnings. But uh, if, if telephony uh, went offline or something, you will be seeing errors here. So you can also kind of manage and, and do something about those, those messages here. They will warn you that something wrong happened on the system that you need to take a look at. But not that relevant for tenant management. So I will just skip that part for now. In here, we can specify the URL of a tenant provisioning service. This tenant management console in here needs to connect to a tenant provisioning tool, and then those services from here can be created on, on the server running this tenant provisioning. So we are connecting to something called tenant provisioning service, and then the service creates those services on the server. Okay, so let's say we want to uh, create a new tenant. So uh, we have to assign a tenant name. So th this is quite straightforward, I think. Uh, so this will be your customer's name. And we have to specify user and password. This is for administrator account. 
Yeah, so this is for the user we can utilize, we can use to straight away log into that tenant once the tenant is created. We can specify abandoned message. Those settings in here are landlord level, so they are kind of system level settings. And, and when we create a new tenant, they will apply only to that tenant. Yeah. So for example, if you specify default abandoned message, uh, this message will be played by default on all the campaigns on that tenant, on pr all predictive campaigns, of course, because abandoned message is used when the call, predictive call is being abandoned, so dropped by the dialer, yeah, we are disconnecting the customer. The same with uh, blanket recording. If you tick that option here, that means that all the calls will be recorded for that specific tenant. So all the calls on all the campaigns. If you don't tick that option, then you can enable blanket recording on campaign level or even agent level. And yeah, blanket recording means uh, everywhere in our system, it means that record all the calls yeah, on that level for the tenant. Calling line ID, identity, so this is CLI. So this is what system should show uh, this is actually an uh, outbound setting, so when we are dialing out to reach customer, what number should be displayed for yeah on, on the mobile phone of, of the customer. So uh, this will be who is dialing the customer, so that they can later use that number to, for example, get back to you and dial in to the system. So this is CLI of the system, of the dialer. Close timeout uh, is a setting used. You will leave this as a default. It's used to shut down campaigns. Uh, so the default behavior is when you have campaign and when campaign is stopped, we are not, so dialer doesn't kill any sessions and doesn't log out agents forcibly. Only agents that are not on the calls are removed, yeah, so are logged out by the dialer automatically, but there might be agents still talking with customers. So in that case, dialer will keep those sessions and agents alive, and it will be waiting for them to finish those conversations and, and go into available state again, only then they will be logged out. Uh, but if this doesn't happen, this is the timeout controlling behavior. So if there are still some agents talking on the campaign, then campaign will be shut down automatically anyway. Because it might be that someone just left some session running, but as you can see, 300, uh, 3,600 seconds, it's one hour, so it's really unusually long talk, chat, yeah, if agent had. It, it must have been some mistake, yeah, an agent was left talking to the customer or for example, in wrapping up state and left his position. So then we can shut down the campaign. Default LFO, I'll skip that option, is, is deprecated, not used anymore. DST, so daylight saving time, works together with the time zone setting, but I think this is also deprecated, not used anymore, so you can leave it as a default. Uh, local ID. So this is quite important option, especially when it comes to uh, predictive dialing. So in predictive dialing, there is something called abandon rate, abandon delay. And depending on country and the type of dialing, you might be allowed to go to up to different percentage of abandon calls. So uh, let me give you some examples. So let's say if you set local ID to US, uh, this means uh, you will be able to do 3% and 2 seconds. Yeah, so 3% abandon rate and 2 seconds because the, the, the market is regulated. Yeah, there are some uh, government institution bodies that regulate that and don't allow you to go above that. Uh, in US, even uh, predictive dialing is more sophisticated because you can't dial mobiles with predictive dialer. You can call only landlines, people at home. In UK, also it's uh, 3% 2 seconds. 
Yeah, and according to the setting you, you, you configure in here in local ID, uh, it will allow you, it will let you, even if you configure campaign to 20%, but local ID is set to UK, you will be able to go only to 3%. So this is like a security sanity check mechanism so that your customers can't do irresponsible things, yeah? like by setting 20% on campaign where you are dialing UK. You shouldn't be allowed to. So you can control your customers with that. Uh, Canada, Mexico is 5% maximum, uh, three seconds. Uh, so is the rest of the world. Uh, basically, this is the limit. Yeah, this is the maximum. According to the setting here, this is your maximum or your tenants maximum. Like if you configure collections, you will be able to go with your campaigns to 20% six seconds. But then on campaign, you can use less than that. You can use 15% or even 3%. Yeah, but this, this configuration will apply, this is your maximum. So uh, you can restrict your system with the maximum Also, you can do password check. Uh, so if, uh, if someone tries to log in to the web client, that attempt will fail. So someone either forgot the password or is trying to hack yeah, the system. You can set maximum number of attempts. So that means that setting, I set it to three, that means that uh, after three attempts, unsuccessful attempts, user account will be locked out. And then it is necessary to go to user settings and untick the checkbox. Uh, I will also mention that, that option when we are reviewing uh, tenants configuration. So this is like a global setting for tenant and then uh, when we will be talking about users specifically, uh, I will I will refer to that option. You can associate it with that. But basically, uh, after number of attempts, lock the account, and that person will not be able to log in again, even with correct password. Maximum ports and maximum trunks; those are uh, telephony settings. So it is possible to limit uh, tenants' resources. So the number, for example, of uh, outbound calls that they will be making, that they can make from the system. So if your customers pay you, one customer pays you for this kind of uh, amount of services, you can then enforce that. So for, for example, I want them to be able to make only 100 calls because they pay me for those kind of operations maximum ports and trunks, uh, you always set it to the same value. That's like maximum number of trunks that can be used on the tenant. Another option, uh, not move on callback. So firstly, we need to start with the definition of what the callback is. Yeah, so the callback is something scheduled by the agent. So if the call has been connected to the agent, it didn't fail in telephony, but was actually connected to the agent, it was a live call, then customer may say, for example, yes, I'm interested in that product, but can you call me on a different number? Or can you call me a little bit later or tomorrow? Yeah, so that's callback. Yeah, where agent assigns a callback from the system for specific date and time. And also there are two types of callbacks, agent specific callbacks where we want to connect when we call out the customer again within a callback, we want to connect the call to the same agent because for example it's about sales and commissions 
or non-agent specific callbacks as well where we don't really care we only care about the call making another call and connecting that customer to any other agent because any other agent is uh, uh, capable of handling this session the next time it is dialed uh, and a default behavior is when we have agent specific callback the agent will be moved to the campaign where callback originates from so let's say that uh, one of the agents scheduled callback with the customer on outbound campaign but then that agent was moved to work on inbound campaign because for example callback was scheduled for the next day so the agent is working on other campaign and we had agent specific callback agent will be moved to the campaign where the callback is dialed from so the outbound campaign original outbound campaign but this behavior can be obviously controlled and by ticking this box you say that no don't move the agent offer that callback on inbound campaign it is possible to also specify a password format so in here what will go is a regular expression uh, for the password to follow RNA timeout uh, so this is ring no answer timeout this is uh, outbound related option so let's let's imagine that uh, let's say that dialer is making outbound call and that call is ringing on the other end but no no one picks up so after some time we need to drop the session yeah, because dialer can't dial in infinity. Uh, usually, uh, for example, when you call from one mobile to another, you also, when you dial someone, at some point, if that person has uh, answering machine switched off, uh, at some point the call will be disconnected because you can't bring, you can't dial in infinity. So this is the setting controlling that behavior. So it means after how many seconds of ringing should the dialer drop the call and assign a dialing cycle outcome of busy of no answer sorry no answer so also this is used for uh, predictive dialing and single sign on uh, settings uh, i won't be talking too much about them but just for you to know uh, that we support our system support it's possible to configure single sign on based on if you have a windows domain and and your agents are logging in to to the pc with their personal credentials it is possible later to use that to log into soft dial so to this web client in in here with those using those credentials from the windows so it's possible to configure that uh, and time zones uh, of course this is also quite straightforward it is later used for a campaign manager so usually you would like to keep that as a server time okay so i think we are done with this so I will now log out from this tenant management console.